Hello and welcome to our latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And today I'm joined by Eileen Imla and her twin. Um, <laughs> masquerading as a mobile phone. <laughs> um, for a session on the use of audio and video um, to help encourage independent learning. So I'm intrigued, Eileen, I'm intrigued. How do you, how do you achieve this? Okay, well, I'm going to show you that, Kenji. Um, and the, the students I teach um, are all in the, the faculty of supported learning. But I would, um, I would say that these techniques wouldn't be limited um, to supported learning, although they are you know, useful in that area. Um, having multi-sensory teaching techniques is always useful. Um, and it does kind of break up the learning a bit and it allows people to engage more than if it's just one form of um, teaching. So hopefully there's there's something that will be useful for people to, to take back and, and use in their own classrooms. Okay, so I shall share the screen. Right. Can you see one that says three approaches now? Yep. Excellent. Okay. Right, so these approaches are based around co-creating learning materials. Um, and by that, I mean, I work on the, the, the teaching and learning materials along with the students. So my teaching pack doesn't have an awful lot in it because I never go to a classroom with a presentation and present the learning to the students. I go to the classroom with the students and we talk about what we're going to learn and we agree what the learning materials will look like. And in particular, what we co-create are animations, podcasts, and then save them all as YouTube videos so that it's, it's more accessible for the, the students. So that's a, a different approach from what many lecturers would take. The benefits of this is that you're engaging the students from, from the, the get go and, and what learning we're going to do and how we're going to do it. It also allows me to personalize the learning and give it context within their lives where they're going to use the learning because learning isn't, doesn't stand alone. Learning is for use in you know, various areas of their life. It also allows me to differentiate my teaching because the, you know, the sort of more able students that get it right away can, can jump in and get in and contribute a lot Whereas the ones who need a wee bit of coaxing and a wee bit of helping, they benefit from what the, the more able students have said. And also it allows me to bring them in and make sure that they've, they've contributed as well. It's a good way of introducing new learning. And it's also a good way of reinforcing the learning that, that we've gone over previously. And by co-creating, it helps the students to buy into the learning. We're going to talk about this. What do you think of that? Do you want to learn about that? And so we've immediately bought in to, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea to learn about that. And it introduces new learning in a gentle way. People can be very overwhelmed at the thought of learning, particularly when you're learning about technology, because it's new and it's different. And there's all those fears of, oh, my goodness, I could easily get overwhelmed here. So we're learning through the process rather than the product. And it builds a lot of skills with the students as well as learning to use the technology. It builds their confidence, their communication skills, their ability to evaluate because at every stage we say, what do you think of that? Does that look good? Will we change it? Is there something we could do better? So they're constantly evaluating the information they're given and how we're going to use it at every stage of the learning and not just at the end of the learning because it can be very difficult to evaluate at the end. What did you think of that? Nobody can think of anything to say. But whereas if you're in the middle of a process and you're evaluating as you go, then it's much, much easier for everybody and, and much more worthwhile. When you're teaching, you're taking students from the known to the unknown. So what I start off with is, well, what are my students already familiar with? And from my knowledge and my experience of, of teaching our students, they're familiar with YouTube. They use YouTube on a regular basis. When you ask what's your favourite use, very often YouTube comes out top. We're all now used to watching animations. Disney makes a fortune with the fact that people like animations. My students are also 
familiar with mobile phones. They might not always be really good at using them in every way, but they're, they're familiar with mobile phones. It's technology they can hold in their hand and, and they, can, they can do that. They're also familiar with their own environment and their own experience. So that's, that's us starting from having identified all this, we're starting from a position of strength. We're not, we're not in a cold start, we're, we're starting from a position of knowledge, their knowledge, and then I can take them through the learning aims, which is to, to help them to gain new technological skills, to make them aware of new technology, to ensure that they can use that technology safely, and to make sure that they're aware of the opportunities that are presented within their environment and that they can access their environment safely. But also, and very importantly, that they retain the knowledge and the skills that, you know, once the classroom's finished, we've got a method of them being able to retain it and also being able to check back on it in a way that's accessible to them. So the, the things that I'm going to talk about today are animations. Animations can be good. I mean, a lot of us are used to using so simple PowerPoint animations to jazz up our, our PowerPoints. Um, GIFs, people love to, you know, use GIFs. It gives a wee bit of, just that wee bit extra. Um, but what I'm mostly going to talk about today is Plotagon. Plotagon Studio um, is, is the software that I use to create animations, co-create learning materials with the students. Okay, so I will stop sharing that and I will share Plotagon with you and let you see what it is I mean. Right, this is Plotagon Studio. It's a web-based animation program. If you were wanting to make really sophisticated animations, you probably wouldn't use this program, but for my purposes, it's ideal. It has a variety of settings. It's, it's easy to use and it's easy for us to amend and adjust uh, along with the students. I'll show you this, this quick one here, um, which was a, a dilemma, mobile phone dilemma, to give you an, an idea of what it, the sort of materials we create. I'll just make sure I'm at the top. I must have not heard the door while I was in the shower. I did not hear anyone either. I missed a parcel delivery. Who is the parcel from? I do not know. Maybe it is an early birthday present. Did they leave a card? No, they sent a text. They say that I have to follow this link and pay two pounds for excess delivery. That does not sound right that they have sent you a link. I think you should be careful. I wonder what is in it. Why would you have to pay? Hi, Matthew. I have had a text from the Royal Mail. I have to pay two pounds so that they will deliver it. Stop. Do not click on that link. Why not? Matthew, I am excited about getting a parcel. It is a scam. What is a scam? It is a trick. If you put in your bank details, they will steal all the money out of your bank account. That is what I was trying to tell you. I am so disappointed. I thought I had a present coming in the mail, but I nearly lost all my money. Thank you for stopping me for making a big mistake. So that's an example of the sort of materials that we create. And again, we're going from the, the known to the unknown. Students know how they feel if you're going to get something in the mail. You know how excited it is. You know that sometimes you don't always listen to your friends, but sometimes you should you should listen carefully and you should take advice and you have to be careful on the phone. So that, that was based on a text I had got at the weekend, exactly that, you know, pay two pounds and you'll get a, a, a parcel. So I took that into the classroom and it allowed us to, to talk about quite difficult concepts of fishing and all these things in a way that was readily understandable and in a way that they could really, really relate to off the bat. Now, we ended up with a two minute video there, but that was, you know, like a, a 45 minute conversation around that. And then the next week playing it back so, so that, that's the, the benefit of being able to do all that and do it quickly within your classroom time. That you can say, who wants to star in this video? Each of the characters there was based on somebody in the class. And I'll show you now how we, how we do that. We start off with a scene. A lot of our scenes at the moment take place in the classroom or in the, the, at home, but they can be anywhere, a meadow in spring. 
The next one is you choose or create a character. Now, there are characters come with it. I find it's very beneficial for us to create characters and create characters that are the students that are in the class. It's also a good teaching tool about diversity because a diverse range of characters come up. And so we, we then have to change that character to, to look more like ourselves. Um, so you can just go in and you can change every aspect of, of the character. Um, you know, so you've got younger faces. Old, that one criticism I would make, the old looks very old. The youngs, you know, most of them are young faces. Um, but for, for the student range that I've got, it's, it's normally fine. So we can go through, you know, to the, the, the what shade of brown do you, do you think your hair is? There's a lot of self-awareness in this as well. And then when people um, get their, their character, they're, they're generally quite happy with their character. The voices that are on here are American voices. You can get a Scottish one, but I've, I've forgotten. I had to get it re-downloaded and I've forgotten to get that bit added back in. Um, but then you just give your, your character a name. And they can star in the, the drama. Obviously, the, in the drama, you can call them anything like that. It's just the character that's based off. Okay, so then we put Eileen into the, the meadow and we've got choices of whereabouts in the meadow do we want her to be. That one's over there. We go to the right of the tree. Okay. It also allows you to record speech. So it's, it's got space there for another actor. So you can have up to two characters on the screen, but you can manipulate a screen to make it look, as you saw in that clip, that there was three characters on it, but you'll only have two in the screen at once. Okay, so if I want Eileen to be speaking, then I can simply record. See, good morning, how are you all? And at any time you can play back, see where you're at. Good morning, how are you all? Okay, so it's very, very easy. You can, you can go into different camera angles, there, there's all sorts of, um, what I find very useful is being able to look at the feelings because I very often use students' feelings to help in the teaching process because you're trying to involve them in the learning and you want, them, you want to contextualize the learning. So you ask them, how do you feel when this happens? So some of the, the expressions maybe don't match what, what you would want, like super excited, you know, is super excited, but that can be useful to, you know, to be um, a bit over the top so that people see how people are feeling. And that was one of the things, that's why that parcel scam works so well, because people are excited. You're going to get a parcel oh, and you maybe forget for a minute, oh, two pounds, or yep, I'll do that. So bringing the feelings into the teaching about technology and about their environment and about their, you know, community skills is, is very important. So that's another thing that I particularly like this this for and and as you can see you just build up and build up um and I, I maybe we'll start off an animation have an idea for the animation and start it off and then the the, the students will, will complete it together so that that's how we're, we're working with that once we've got our animations completed we can then send them to youtube and i just to do that Oops, no, that's wrong one. To do that, I just, to do that, I've just forgotten how I do that. But anyway, I do do it, I'll, I'll check again how I do it. Save it as a video and you get, you can save it as different sizes of videos. You have the choice. I find that um, saving it, if it's too big, it takes too long to save. So then what I would do is I'd email it to the students and they would then be able to open it in their, their own YouTube account. So they'll, at the moment, I've got the students all sending me a Gmail so we can make these private accounts so that we can, you know, use student experiences and they'll be in a private way. But you can also do them as unlisted or public, whatever you, you choose to do. So I am now going to stop sharing and get my alter ego to share on the phone and, and show you 
um, how it looks from the student's point of view. So what they are getting is their, their video shared, uh, share screen, hold on, share screen. Okay, so this is my mobile phone and what all I've done is I've um, logged on on my mobile as well, which allows me to fully teach my students how to use apps and how to access these videos. Okay, so I've got my YouTube open on it and I'll just turn it sideways. I'll need to put, hold on, I'll go back to share the audio. Share the audio on this. Hello, students. I want you to watch the following clip and think about the questions at the end. When you come back to class, we'll finish off the story based on what you decide should happen next. I had better go now, Callum. We have college tomorrow and you know what Eileen is like if we are late. Just one more game, Gary. Never mind, Eileen. Okay then, I will just stay here for a while. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you won again. I demand a rematch. That's fine with me, but I will win again. Game over. I won again. Okay, that was fun, but now it is really late. I suppose we had better get some sleep. Yes, I had better go. Oh no, I have slept in. I will I'll be late for college. Good morning, how are you? What do you think Eileen's going to say to Gary? Do you think Callum's going to make it to college? Do you think they're both going to be in trouble? What advice would you give Callum and Gary to help them to stay out of trouble in future? Can you think about these questions before the next class? And be ready with some answers so that we can finish this drama together. This will help not only Gary and Callum, but any other students who have difficulties with using technology too late at night. I look forward to seeing you all in class. That shows how we can use it to develop thinking skills. So likewise, I do the same. Now we make up PowerPoint presentations. Um, I'll share the screen and just very quickly show you this one. So this is a, a sample one for the students to... My Community by Eileen Imler. Okay, so I'm the make not one about my community. I live in Lanarkshire. Okay, and you know, just going through and putting in photographs and, and things from my community. And then what we do is we save that. I would save that as a video. So I'll go in and I'll do save as... Um, save it into this file and change it to mp4 mp mpeg video okay and save that as a video and likewise i can then send that to youtube and another thing that we've recently started to develop um is doing some uh, podcast type activities so again that involves us talking about things in our classroom and, and things that affect them. You need to know what technology can do and how you can use it for what you want to do. We're all different. There's only one you, and you are brilliant at being you. No one else can be you. You have a right to live your life your way. I love to make things. I love them. Okay. And again, I can save that and send it 
and and you know, or I can upload it to a podcast site. Um, but it gives us all these different ways of getting the same messages across to students and reinforcing the learning, involving them in the learning and contextualizing the learning. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I certainly have found this, uh, during this pandemic, a good way to teach and a, and a good way to interact with my students. That's, that's great, Eileen. And we, we do have some time for, for some questions. Um, I certainly have one myself uh, being just, how, how quickly do you find it takes to get the students familiar with the software that you're introducing? Because I understand the concept is familiar. They're, they're familiar with watching YouTube videos, as you say, and interacting with that kind of media. But how about getting to grips with the, the software that you demonstrated today? Well, at the moment, because we're, we're doing it virtually, um, mm. the, the students, it's very difficult for them to be doing hands-on at the moment. So at the moment, the contribution is, what will the person say? Okay, but it means that they have they're seeing me every week doing this. So I'm, I'm quite confident when we're back in the classroom because, because it's something that is so motivational. It's something that they will love to do. It was, it's something, you know, even if you, if, you, if you struggle with literacy, then, you know, my technique would say, tell me what it is you want to say and I would write it down. What would you say in that situation? And then write down what they say and they would type it in. Um, it is so easy to use that, you know, I, I think students will get to grip to it. I got to grips with it very quickly. Um, an animation software can be quite tricky, you know, and that one is just it's so motivational for them that they, they would learn, they would learn to, to do, to actually make videos on their own very quickly. And my, my experience is using animations, they do, you know, elf yourself. People were elfing themselves in no time because it was so, so much fun. And, and that is the key, as I say, taking them from, you know, something that they love to do naturally, see videos, be involved in videos, to actually doing it themselves. It's, you know, they'll, they'll do what it takes to get there. And, and seeing themselves in the video, that's yeah. obviously a very motivational aspect of it. So are you saying that within, you mentioned before, uh, roughly a 45 minute uh, online session, are you able to create a video through your discussion during I, I, that time or do you do it after? I, 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 do, I fine tune it afterwards. Um, so I would do the, the, the bulk of the discussion because I, I want to focus my time. I could, if, if that was my, if I was more interested in output than process, then I could. But I'm interested in the process. I'm interested in getting the feedback from the students. That's what the, the teaching session is about. I'm capturing what they're saying, um, and I capture it roughly in the in it. And then you know you don't need to do a video a week, and I don't do a video a week. So if we we start to a video and we you know we 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 talk about everything, and then go back to the next week. Here's where we were at, right? What do you think? What will we change? And sometimes I'll have tweaked one or two things before the class, um, and and the things about me saying you know um, watch this video and whatever. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that within the class time. I do that afterwards before I send it out to them. Um, and it was really interesting the way that that story ended about the, the two that were in trouble, you know, for them to say, because they were saying, oh, you'll need to apologise to the lecture, they'll need to go to the bed early, you know, and it was very much, we put it into the video that the suggestions came from the two students that were in trouble, and not from their parents, or from the lecturer, you know, and they made it right, and the students absolutely, they loved, they loved every part of that process. I, I like the fact you've got the discussion there, and you're reinforcing it through this other medium essentially and as you follow up okay uh, i don't want to hog all the time um any other questions jason yeah i'll come in with one you said that, uh, and again it's very clear that you're building on the uh, skills and familiarity that students already have with this um but i take it that there is a range and what you do to support those who might be at the slightly more developmental stage shall we say but for those students um for those students, what I would be, be looking at is their awareness of, of what they have in, in their lives and who they have in their lives and how they look and what they like and don't like. And there's lots of scope for doing that within these, these videos, you know, giving a choice of setting. So I might say to somebody, where do you want it to be set? And that might be an easy decision for them to make, whereas somebody else might be able to more usefully uh, give you dialogue. You know, and sometimes what you what you have to do in, in our area when you're teaching 
um, for, for students that, that have difficulty communicating um, their likes and dislikes. You maybe give them two or three choices. Where do you think, will we start in the living room? Will we start in the classroom? Will we start where? Where, where do you want to start? So they're only having to give a one word answer, but it is their contribution and it's their decision. They, they've they you know contributed meaningfully to the, to the overall thing and we'll be aware that they've done that because that was their, their decision. And when we go back over it, we reinforce, right, you know, um, so-and-so chose that we would start in the living room. That was a good choice because that let us do this. So there's lots of ways in which you can reinforce the contribution that anybody's made, however small it is. And uh, there's always the danger with these sort of things that um, the, at the beginning, the no novelty value starts off fairly high and that's sort of very engaging. Does it tail off? It, it doesn't tail off as such, but you do have to vary. If you're doing the same thing every week, then it would get boring. And that's why we vary. So if I'm doing something about phones, then I might say, well, we'll make a wee podcast about that. What one do we say? You know, and just keep varying the activity and not do the same thing week in. It's not a formula for, for every class for all time. It's it's useful, you know, to get across the messages that you're getting across. And so some some weeks we'll, we'll do something different and then come back to it. So for a lot of the time for technology, what I'm doing is saying, like we've got a cafe drama that's opened that's going to be like an EastEnders one. Um, and it's it's just opened and we've only introduced the characters. And now what we're doing is talking about safety on mobile phones and things, and we're doing all sorts of other activity. And we'll bring different scenes from that in. So people will be sitting in the cafe maybe and get a fishing call in. They may be sitting in the cafe and getting a, you know, a fishing call on the phone and say something has happened. Oh, should I do this? And we've already got the experience from that other one that was in the living room and whatever. So they will be able to then contribute to that drama more meaningfully than they did the, the, the first time, where the first time I explained all about fishing to them. You know, so you can build it up by by just varying all the activities. And Eileen, just just to ask, just as we're coming to the end of our recorded part of the session, um, have you found any interest uh, outside of your own department in curricular area? Are there people interested in this format uh, working with students? Well, I have shared it at the teach meet, but to be honest, I haven't sought any feedback on that. Um, I would like to think that that yes, others have have taken it on board um, for use, and it's certainly something I will promote within within the college. I I I, I, do, I do think it has application on a much wider basis. I remember um, I I taught English um, in a prior life, and one of the problems my students had was speaking at a pace. They they were always uncomfortable they needed to take time to formulate what they wanted to say. <clears throat> and when we did, I think I remember, please, this is a recording. <laughs> I, I think I used clips of friends, for example, and I would take down the sound and I would get my students to, to write script and voice over the actions that they saw on screen. And the main thing about that was they had to keep to pace because the camera kept shifting from person to person. But the they were fascinated by dialogue and seeing it appear. So I can I can fully under, appreciate and understand um, how it plays into the motivation and, and, and the fact you're creating. Don't like to be videoed. Mm. They don't want but seeing themselves in animation form. They love that. <laughs> you know, the two characters that were saying, "Never mind for Eileen." <laughs> you know, they, they love that they're sitting on their couch saying, "I forget about it." My wife always tells me I look better animated. Um, well, okay, so that's all we have time for 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 this virtual bridge session. Thank you so much, Eileen, for for sharing your work with us. And um, certainly, if you're joining us here on YouTube, and uh, then if you have time, please join us at a future live virtual bridge session. But until then, stay safe. <laughs>